Hello, my name is Stephanie Seberg. I am from Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, today I'm going to be discussing the prompt hierarchy. Um, I want to start by discussing what a prompt is. So a prompt is a form of assistance or a cue, um, which we also refer to as an antecedent ma manipulation. This increases the likelihood of a de desired response. Um, so for example, the task could be identifying items by their color and I may ask the learner, you know, where is the orange ball? Me saying, where is the orange ball, would serve as a prompt to the learner to point or pick up the orange ball, whereas without saying anything, the learner may not have elicited the desired response we are looking for. Um, prompts can be, can come in the form of instructions, um, it could be gestures, uh, demonstrations, which we also refer to as modeling, um, as well as uh, touches or for partial uh, physical touches, or other things that can help increase the likelihood that the learner will make correct responses. <clears throat> so the prompt hierarchy that we're going to be talking about today, um, there are six different levels, seven different levels if you count the independent one at the top. Um, the first one we are going to be discussing is the visual uh, prompt. This can be um, pictures or objects that uh, really clue in the learner into what they are supposed to be um, to be doing. Um, a good example of this uh, could be a picture schedule. So, for example, uh, if we have something like this, a picture schedule in a bathroom... It would say, you know, wash hands, and then it would go through um, turning on the water, getting soap, wa then washing your hands, turning off the water, and then drying your hands. Um, so this would be just something that's posted in the bathroom or in the kitchen, in front of the sink, wherever there's a sink, um, where the learner might want to be washing their hands. And it shows them how to go through each step just by looking at the picture. The next um, level on the prompt tracker we're going to be discussing is a uh, verbal prompt. Now, the verbal prompt uh, provides information to the learner um, to help them respond correctly. So, in my earlier example, um, when I asked the learner, where is the orange ball? Me asking where is the orange ball would be an example of a verbal prompt. Next on the hierarchy is a gest gestural prompt. So this is considered additional physical movements um, that we would do uh, that does not actually include us physically touching the learner. And it signals, to, uh, really signals to get the client's attention to the task at hand. Um, so for example, this could be um, if a learner is working in front of me and I might tap on the table in front of the um picture card that I'm wanting them to focus on. This could also be when they go to pick a card, I might nod my head. Or if I'm wanting them to go to the bathroom, I might turn my head and look at the bathroom. The next one is a modeling prompt. Um, the modeling prompt is where we demonstrate the desired target response or skill that we're wanting the learner to exhibit. So if I, for example, if I'm teaching the um, learner to wash their hands appropriately, right, <clears throat> I would go in the bathroom with the learner. I would show them physically, you know, turning the water on, getting the soap, and show them washing my hands. Um, I would do this uh, with any other kind of skill that I'm wanting to teach. So if it's me teaching them to put their shirt on correctly, um, I might have a, a doll that I could use um, that the clothes come off and show how you put the, arm, the doll's arm through the shirt and then the other arm and then the head and so on and so forth. Um, next, we're going to talk about a partial physical prompt. So this is when um, we might uh, touch the hand of the learner or maybe touch their elbow and pick up like to encourage them to start moving. <clears throat> so basically the difference with this one is that the learner is also sharing in the load 
uh, of the work and the effort to complete the task we're wanting them to complete. Um, the other physical prompt is a full physical prompt. Um, this is when we fully assist the child to complete the task. Um, we also refer to this as hand over hand. So when it comes to using the example with wash, learning teaching to wash their hands, what we would do is we would take the client's hands in ours and then we, you know, get the soap, turn the, or turn the water on, get the soap, and then put their hands under and we'd rub them together for them. And then we'd help to have them turn hand over hand, turn the water off, and then go and proceed to dry their hands. <clears throat> Something to keep in mind when prompting is to allow time in between prompts to allow the learner time to process what we're asking of them and then to then respond. So now I wanna shift gears a little bit and talk about why prompts are important. Prompts are important for two distinct reasons, in my opinion. Uh, one is when we're wanting to teach a new skill to a learner and also when we are wanting to ensure mastery of a skill. So depending on the skill level of the learner, when teaching a new skill, we might use what's called most to least. So that's when we would start at the bottom of our little pyramid and work our way up. <coughs> so for some, you may have to start at full physical and work our way up. Some, we might be able to start at just modeling, model it for them and then, then be able to uh, complete the task we're wanting them to complete. And then for others, if we were wanting to uh, determine mastery of a skill, what we would do is we'd start at the top, so independence, and then work our way down as needed. So uh, we might start seeing if the learner can simply wash their hands by themselves. If they can't, then we then they would rely on the visual prompt in the bathroom. If not, then a gesture like, hey, or even if it's, uh, you know, turning on the water um, and so on and so forth. On a final note, I want to finish up by saying um, when using prompting, it is also important to remember to fade prompts as soon as possible. Um, and what this means is that we always use the least intrusive, so like the least amount of uh least amount of our support that we need to give them so uh if they don't need full physical and they just need us to like kind of tap their arm and get them going that's all we would use um also to uh by using or fading prompts as soon as possible this also eliminates the or decreases the chance of the learner becoming prompt dependent um, where they won't correctly respond independently. And after all, uh, our ultimate goal of working with individuals with autism spectrum disorder is to teach them to how to be as independent as possible. Thank you so much for watching.